So then, what's in the box? Hello, my name is Tom. This is Tom's Toys 95 and welcome back. If you are new here, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm a part-time eBay reseller as well as a video game collector. So a lot of my content recently has been eBay reselling videos. So I thought I'd switch it up and show some of my game collection. So as you can see, I've got my PS3 collection here. And then these are sort of steel books and various other bits and bobs from Xbox there. So we've got a variety of, of games. Um, but one of the things that I do collect as well is sealed games. Now in this big box here, it's quite a lot of sealed games that I've collected over the years, bought in the sale, found at car boots and things like that. So anytime I get a sealed game, I usually tend to keep it. Now I do have more sealed games on the shelf. I did pick up a bunch of sealed games, um, which was one of my first ever videos on this channel, which inspired me really to make the channel, was I bought about 40 or 50 sealed games in the game uh, Christmas sale, and they were three, four, five pounds each on the Switch and PS4, and I thought I have so many games here that it would be silly not to do a video on it. So I made that video and that's sort of what kickstarted the channel. I moved into my own property probably about six months ago now, and I was renting before that, so I left most of my stuff at my mum's house when I moved out. Now that I've moved into my own house, it's time to have them back. So as you can see, I am running out of space. This room's not very big, and I'm not sure where I'm going to fit these games exactly. However, it's time to have them back and put them into my collection. Now, before I do open them and add them to the collection, I thought I'd do a video on it. So a lot of the stuff in here will be PS Vita things, but there also are PS3 and PS4 as well, and some Wii and Wii U. Now, I genuinely have forgotten what most of the stuff in here is, so it's going to surprise me as well as hopefully you guys. Uh, I thought it would make a good video to go through it and just see what's in here. Uh, most of it won't be for sale and will be for my personal collection, so this won't be going on eBay, uh, at least most of it won't be there might be a couple of things in here that i see now and think oh i don't need that anymore in which case um i may pull some out to sell on ebay but most of these will be going straight into my collection and back on the game shelf now i haven't thought too far ahead in terms of where i'm going to put the games once i've opened it so we're just going to roll with it and i might just have to do a few cuts of me putting the game somewhere um but i've got a desk in front of me so i'll probably start stacking them up here but there are a lot this is a shark hoover box it's probably about a metre tall and at least 30 to 40 centimetres wide and it is full to the brim of video games. Now I'll show you a little snippet in a moment of me opening the lid and then I'll show you the sort of surface layer so you get an idea of what's in here and then after that it's going to be a complete surprise so stick around to the end to see what I've got because there might be some really good games at the bottom of the pile. So then let's get into what's in the box. I'm really excited about this video because I have been wanting to go through this box for about three weeks now. I had this idea to do this video about three or four weeks ago and I just haven't got around to doing it. My room has been a mess so I have had to tidy it up. But I finally got around to tidying up and it's time to go through the box. So let's see what's inside or at least what's on the top layer and then I will go through the rest of the box. So let's open it up and see. So the first thing we have is FIFA 19 Ultimate Team Steelbook. And on this side, we've got Hot Wheels World's Best Driver. Now, the only reason I want to show you this top layer is just to prove to you that this is completely full of games. There's no air in this, there's no space in this. This is completely full. And just to get an idea of the depth, this is how far the box goes down. So without further ado, let's get into what's in the box. Right, I've just gone and got a box next to me so that I can put all the games on to save me putting them on the desk and getting all that horrible interference noise. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first one, as I've already shown you, is FIFA 19 Steelbook. This doesn't have a game in. This was a pre-order bonus that I found on eBay for about £3. Uh, if I remember prices, I'll tell you. Otherwise, I'll just go through them. I'll try not to dwell too much unless it's a game I've played and I'll obviously discuss it a little bit. Um, but we'll fly through the first few. So FIFA 19 Ultimate Edition. Next, we've got uh, Hot Wheels World Best Driver on the PS3. This was £2 from a car boot. Uh, the disc is loose, though, unfortunately. I've never played the game, but I do plan on playing it. I have an opened copy as well, which I, uh, if I do want to play it, I can. Now, we've got some 360 titles. So this is Dead Island Riptide. This was just bundle fodder that I picked up from a bundle years ago. So it has, doesn't cost me much. Um, probably only paid about a pound for it. 
Up next, we've got a bundle copy of Halo 4. So this would have come in a console um, of some sort, probably a Halo 4 console maybe, and then the game would have been included. Um, yep, still sealed. Uh, again, doesn't cost me much. So any 360 stuff, I don't really collect. So these would have been really cheap. I don't go out my way to buy them. So as I said, it would have been a cheap purchase and I've just picked them up and kept them for the collection because they're sealed. This one I remember buying for myself to play when I was younger. This was 8 99 in the Amazon sale, I believe. And I just never got around to opening it. And after a little while, I thought there's no point opening it. Um, I might as well keep it sealed. And this was probably one of the first games I ever kept sealed. This and I had a Gran Turismo 5 Collector's Edition. I'm not sure if that's in here or on the shelf already. Um, but spoiler alert, if I do, if it is in here, then I've just told you what it is. Um, but yeah, this and the Collector's Edition of Gran Turismo 5 were on sale on Amazon and I believe the GT5 was from game and it was on sale for about 20 quid and these were the first two games I ever kept sealed and then everything else I've either kept sealed or bought sealed. Up next then what I can see is some Vita games so I am a big PlayStation Vita collector so I have all of the limited run games and all of the limited run variants. I'm very close to completing the full PAL UK set. So there's two two nine games and I believe I'm about 19 away. Um, so I probably have about 210, something like that, unique titles. Um, there's a few other ones as well. But then there's also Play Asia, which is another like subset. And they are Asian English releases. So there's 75 or 76, I believe, in the set. And I started collecting around about 26 to 30 and some of them I already owned um, that I picked up from eBay but I started collecting around the 30 mark and there's only one or two I missed so I should have about 40 whether all 40 are in this box I don't know but I know there's quite a few so I'll fly through these so the first one is Horizon Chase Turbo now I think this game is only available on cartridge so I don't think this was a download uh, I could be wrong but I think this is one of the only games where this is the only physical or the only way to play it is having the physical copy that is number 62 so this one is 71 this is Bard's Gold any game I haven't played I'm just going to fly through so um, Kawaii Defu Desu I believe no idea that one is uh, 44 the next one is Sense I don't know what that says underneath it it looks um, Japanese so it just says Sense this is number 53. Then we've got Twin Breaker. This is a nice little brick um, brick breaker game where you've got the little platform that goes and the little bouncy balls go down and break the bricks. Um, this is quite a cool game. This is one that I really wanted to open and play. I don't know if there's a download for it, um, but this is one that I would play, so I may open this in the future. Uh, this is number 33. This one's quite a rare one, if I remember, this one is Unmetal, this is kind of like a Metal Gear Solid inspired game. Um, so yeah, that's number 52. Roommates, now if I remember rightly, yes, this one is number 15. So this is a really low number um, in terms of printing runs, this was the 15th copy to be printed. Um, doesn't really mean too much if you get number one it's worth a lot of money number 15 is probably not worth it much extra than any other number um, but it's still cool that this is only the 15th copy printed everything else is like in the hundreds or thousands so um, nothing of note other than this one um, but that is roommates then up next we've got number 37 this one is guard duty Then we've got Demons Tier Plus. I think the cool thing with the Play Asia titles as well is they usually they're thicker, so they always have some sort of CD or um, collectible inside of it. So here, for example, printed manual, numbered certificate, original soundtrack, and the game. So they always have some bonus um, extras with it as well, which is really nice. I don't know if I said that was Hybroxia 2. This next one is Xeno Crisis. This is number 35. Then we have My Aunt is a Witch. This is number 49. This is another one that's quite expensive, if I remember rightly. I 
know a lot of people missed out on that one. The next one is Emma Lost in Memories. This is number 34. Then we have Task Force Campus, and that is number 41. All of these are sealed and unopened, by the way. Uh, I don't think there's any in here that are opened, or at least there shouldn't be. So this one is a Chasm, and this is number 40. So when I say numbers, by the way, each uh, game in the Play Asia series has a number from 1 to 75, which I think was the last one. So that's just the number that they came out in. Um, the number that I showed you on Roommates is the number that the games were printed in. So, for example, this Chasm game was number 1,900 to be printed, but in the set of games, it's number 40. So this next one is number 46, and that is Death Tales. We've got Gan Bear, which is a football game, and I am a football fan, so this is one that I would like to play. Um, some of these I'm going to look to try and download from the PS Store, since it's still active. And any that are deleted from the store, then I may either look for an open copy on eBay or consider opening it myself. But I haven't opened any of these yet, because they are really bought to be collectibles. And, you know, I've decided to keep everything sealed so far, so it would be silly to open just one or two games. Um, but there are some genuinely good games in here. Um, so the next one is Halloween Forever, and that is number 45. So the PS Vita games do go quite deep, so I think there are quite a lot of these. So what I'm going to do now is switch to the other consoles, just so it doesn't get too boring for you. So obviously if you don't collect for Vita, you're probably bored right now with me going through all the Vita games. So let's switch it up a bit. So we have a sealed copy of Zelda Twilight Princess HD on the Wii U. This is a title that has shot up in price or at least kept its value. So open, this goes anywhere between 60 and 70 pounds. And a sealed copy will fetch upwards of 100, 150 pounds, maybe more. Um, the only problem with this is once they release the Switch HD port, uh, which inevitably they will do, or they may even do a remaster for the um, Switch 2, then this absolutely will tank in price. So it's one of those games where it's, if you are going to sell it, I would probably sell it soon, simply because I reckon that they will bring out a Switch version, or at least as the Switch 2 um, gets announced they'll stop making Switch games and they'll move on to the Switch 2 and as a goodbye or a last hurrah for the Switch console I have a feeling that they will um, make a um, Zelda Twilight Princess and a Wind Waker HD whether that's on the same cartridge or they do it separately I don't know um, but I'm sure they will they're the last of the Wii U games to be ported and it's Zelda of course they're going to do it um, so I think once they do do that I think the prices of these could drop um, the only reason I think they might not drop is if people want, obviously, the Wii U copies. The Wii U is also a collectible console because it didn't sell very well. Um, so I think they they will drop, not by much, but I'm almost certain that they will drop when that they when they port it over. Um, but if you are just collecting them, as I am, especially with Zelda, I love the Zelda games, then um, it doesn't really bother me if it drops or not. Um, these are both sealed. So the next one is Wind Waker HD. Um, so I do collect... Um, specifically Zelda games as well so we have a Zelda um, full set of games now I only started collecting the sealed ones from like, the Wii U Wii era um, 3DS Wii U Switch um, the DS is quite expensive to get the sealed games for and so is the Wii and obviously the N64 GameCube etc like there's no point even starting collecting those sealed now those are five six seven hundred pounds maybe even a thousand pound plus I know that the N64 Ocarina of Time sealed went for like two grand so I'm not even going to bother collecting those um, this is a cool one to have sealed this is Tales of Graces on the PS3 uh, this comes with a CD soundtrack and an art book. I do believe it's sun faded a little bit on the back. The colours don't look very bright. Um, but this was purchased off Facebook, I believe. I think this was £15. Um, and this goes for around 40 to 45 I think, at least. So um, I'm very happy with that one. That is a cool one. Then we've got another PS3 game. We have the Darksiders collection. Now, this was £12 on eBay only some three, four years ago. 
and within a few months the seller had loads of copies but after I bought this copy I, I still had it in my watch basket uh, in my watch pile sorry and this got uh, upped in price to 15 then 20 so I don't know whether they've still got any left but this went for around 20 25 pound last time I looked so this is quite a nice one to have this has dark sides one and two and it comes in a nice um, cardboard sleeve now the next one is another eBay purchase that was in the clearance this was I believe nine or ten pounds and this is Star Wars The Force Awakens this comes with Poe's X-Wing fighter Lego minifigure and the game is inside and that's all nice and sealed now these ones are really cool and really expensive so I had to pay up for these so I purchased a limited run full set of games with all the variants and most of the cards the trading cards and I had already started collecting limited run games and I started collecting around the 25 to 30 mark and I'd collected all the way up to 100. Now there were a couple that I missed in between and there were a couple of variants, those that collect limited run games, especially the PS Vita, will know how hard it was to get some of those games because they just sold out instantly. Um, so there was a guy on a group selling the entire limited run set with all of the variants and some of the cards and he wanted £4,000 for it. Now I did buy it and I did pay the £4,000 and it did hurt the wallet and it was a big chunk of savings which I had, um, which was going on my house deposit. So that probably delayed the move slightly, but it was worth it. So I got a full set of um, limited run games and all the stuff that comes with it. Um, now my versions I've still got. Um, I'm waiting until the store closes before I sell them just so they reach maximum value. I think if I sell them now, there's still potential that they increase in price. So the whole reason that they were made is so when digital games get removed from the store, you still have a physical copy and they're not lost forever. Now at the moment, they haven't reached their purpose, which essentially is once they get deleted, you can have a physical copy. So as they are still widely available to download, then I think it's not worth selling them and it's worth waiting until the store closes and that's when people will panic and that's when the prices will go up and that's when it'll be a really good time for me to sell my duplicates. But at the moment, um, I'm just happy sitting on them for a bit. But the point of these next three sales is there's also another company um, that made signature games and I believe there's might be five in total. Uh, I've got three of them sealed and these cost me additional with that £4,000. I think I had to pay something like £100 for the rest of these three. Or it might have even been £150, they were like £50 each. But the first one is the Long Reach. Now this is the signature edition. I don't know if there's real signatures inside. Obviously you've got the printed signatures on the front here. Um, let's have a look. It doesn't say anything on the back what comes with it. It definitely has the game in and something else, maybe an art book or a soundtrack. Um, the next one is uh, Count Lucanor. This one also has a postcard with it, so that tells you what you get. So inside you get the CD soundtrack and an art book. Um, it doesn't mention anything about signatures, so maybe the signature is just on the front. Um, they are just printed on though, they're not genuine, so I'm not sure about that. But the good thing is, is the games come with the postcards, so I have all three postcards and all three games. Now I'm sure they made five of these, so there's two more for me to get, um, but I have the first three I believe. So the next one is Slain Back to Hell. And the next one is Count Lucanor, which I've just mentioned. So we've got those three as well as the postcards, so those are pretty awesome. Now we've got a bunch of Wii U games, some of them are duplicates, so the first one is Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now I've had a really unlucky time trying to get a sealed copy of this, so when this came out I thought this would go the same way as the Twilight Princess on the GameCube, where it came out on the Switch and that was the one that made the most sales, just like the Wii version of Twilight Princess made the most sales, and then the GameCube version kind of got left behind a bit as people moved over to the Wii. So same with the Wii U, as people moved over to the Switch, the Wii U kind of got forgotten about, and also most people forgot about the Wii U anyway, no one bought it. Um, so I bought, tried to get a few copies of this, and uh, every copy that I purchased seemed to have some sort of snag or tear in the plastic, and it's just really frustrating because I've not been able to get like a really mint copy, so I'm not sure 
uh, if this one has sellotape, I think this has sellotape over the seal. So this had a little snag here. So this one's not perfect, but um, it does have the seal and everything on it. Um, and I believe there's one or two more copies. So yeah, we've got another copy of Breath of the Wild on the Wii U. So as you can see on this one, same sort of thing there, there's a little snag on the plastic. So obviously that affects the value when it comes to selling it. Now I bought these specific games with resale value in mind, because obviously as I just mentioned about the, uh, the GameCube version um, going for a lot of money nowadays. So I hoped this would do the same. Um, this one actually seems okay. I don't know if there's uh, any tears anywhere. So this looks the best condition one. Uh, there may be a slight tear somewhere, but for the most part, this one's in really good condition, so I'm happy with that. Um, but the other two do have snags. And we've also got the Nintendo Select. So this is for my collection, so this is the Nintendo Select version also sealed. So I have the standard version, and I've also got the Select version. Now, up next, this one seems to have dropped in price. This was cost me about £30, and I looked on eBay, and you can buy this sealed for like £23, £24. I'm not sure why. Um, they're going for a lot less, maybe because the Switch version came out, which is what I was saying about the other copies. Um, but £25 for a, a sealed uh, Wii game, especially Zelda, with the um, special orchestral CD. Seems very cheap. Um, so, yeah. I would personally go and buy that right now, um, but I already have a copy so I don't need to, but I might buy some more, who knows. Um, but this is the Skyward Sword version on the Wii. And lastly, unfortunately I don't have the normal label, but I do have the Nintendo Select version. This is Twilight Princess on the Wii. Uh, this is another one I want to pick up sealed, but um, the normal version, but that is about 60, 70 plus. So I settled for the select version, and I think I paid about seventeen ninety nine for this. So moving on, then I can see some PS three, some PS four, and there's some more Vita. So the Vita is the most easily accessible. So we'll go back to the Vita now. So uh, Play Asia forty eight. This number is, and this one is re after. Or re after. Then we've got Nicole Limited Edition, and that is number 43. We've got another one of Rebirth. Now, I don't know if this is two different copies or not. Uh, or if they're set. Yeah, they are different. So we've got number 48 and number 47. So I don't know. Oh, one's Re After and one's Remaster. Those anime games, I just don't know much about, to be honest. Obviously, I collect them because I collect the PS Vita, but at the same time, I don't play anime games. They just go over my head. I don't know what's going on on half of them. Um, so, yeah, I just tend to avoid them, to be honest. Uh, my Aunt is a Witch. I have a duplicate here, so that one will be going in the dupe pile. Um, that is another separate video, actually, that I'm um, planning on making is I, to make space in the game room, I pulled out every game that I have twice, whether that's sealed or non-sealed. Anything that I have twice or more of, I pulled out and put into a box. And these are my duplicates. So I planned on making a video on all of my duplicates and seeing how much they're worth and having like a running calculator. And that might encourage me then to sell some of them. If I actually see how much, like I genuinely don't know how much it's all worth. I could pick it up and tell you this is worth 50 pounds, this is worth 30 pounds. But obviously collectively, I don't know how much value is there. So I think if I knew the true value of what's in those um, duplicate piles, then I feel like I would be more inclined to actually sell them and realize some money and invest some of that money into YouTube, into better equipment, into more games, I don't know. But I feel like that money could go into something else, even if it goes into the house, because you know there's always repairs and things you can do to uh, improve the house. So um, I wanted to make a video on that. So if anyone is still watching and would like to see a video on that, please let me know in the comments below. Um, the only reason I was a bit hesitant is because if I do a running calculator and you know it, it comes across as bragging that I'm bragging about all my duplicates and it's worth thousands of pounds potentially. So that's not the case. I just want to do it to see. I just thought it'd be interesting to see how much I actually have that's just sat there in duplicates. So as an example, this one is going to go in the duplicate pile. And if I do that video, then obviously this will be in there. So what I will do as well is pop over 
the Wii U Breath of the Wild games because those are also duplicates. So then, anyway, back to the games. So, Root Double, this is number 42. We have another Horizon Chase Turbo, so I'm going to put this in the doubles as well. Um, so some of these games I did, but you can buy two copies of, so I bought two, because towards the end of it, um, people were scalping and trying to get as many copies as possible. And whilst I technically fall into that category because I bought two, um, it wasn't worth the risk of running out. So let's say one game sold out and I couldn't get it, then I have to go on eBay and pay double the price, or triple the price. So my plan was with some of them is to buy two, then if next time I can't get one, I can sell one and essentially swap it. Um, I'd be able to sell that for double the money, and then when I buy the one for double the money, it's not as painful. Um, whilst that might seem selfish, that was the best way to do it, and sometimes as game collectors, you know, that's what we have to do. Um, other people would have done the same, so I'm not too mad about it. Um, this one is 67. This is Brotherhood United. We've got uh, Taco Tan. This is number 61. A lot of these games I've not heard of, to be honest. Um, this next one I have, and I've played this one. This one's cool. This is Astro Aqua Kitty. I don't know if this is the first or second game, but uh, one of them they brought out as a download. Um, and I bought that day one. This was totally one of the last PS Vita download games before the store closed. Um, so I do enjoy playing that one now and again. This one is Indigo Quest for Love. This is number 66. Another one I've not played. Pushy Pulley in Blockland. This is number 65. So it looks like the Vita goes all the way to the bottom of the box. So in a moment, we're going to switch back over again once we get to the next layer. Um, and I can uncover the next lot of games. Uh, this one is Dungeons and Bombs. And this is number 59. So then, let's move back onto the PS4. So the first game... Ah, so I also really like the VR. Now, I am a collector of PlayStation, uh, mainly, and Nintendo. Um, but I focus on PlayStation mostly, and I just get the games I like for Nintendo. Now, I always like to support Sony's peripherals, whether they fail or not. So, for example, I love the Vita, uh, which, let's face it, is a peripheral. Like, they never supported it properly. Yes, it had remote play for PS4, uh, which made it a peripheral. But whilst it was a standalone console, it didn't do very well, and Sony never supported it. So I supported it right till the end. I bought all the games for it. I bought all the physical games for it. I bought all these limited edition games. Um, the Wonder Book, that was another failed thing by Sony. When the PlayStation Move came out, I bought that day one. And I played Sports Champions and that Kung Fu Rider. And some of the games, looking back, were really trash. But there were a couple of really good hidden gems. Like Killzone 3 was brilliant in, in the Move. So obviously everyone knows Killzone 3, but not many people have played it with the PlayStation Move. And that was a really good game. It was kind of like a, a VR game, but in 2D. Um, and obviously without the helmet, it was um, obviously it had the realism of the shooting with the with the move gun, um, and it was a shame that it never really took off. Um, and the move slowly came into the PlayStation VR, which I am a big uh, supporter of, so I love the VR, and I also bought the VR2. Um, I'm a little disappointed with Sony with the VR2 because I've just not supported it uh, very much. They've not brought out or announced any first party games for it and um, they've not really advertised it, let's be honest. You don't see the VR2 on the TV or anything like that. Um, and it is just a big expensive peripheral at this point and a big dust collector. But the point of this story is I, um, I also started collecting VR games and I did want to get a full set of VR games and I just never got around to it um, and they started getting expensive and I lost track, so I didn't in the end. However, Limited Run did make a series of PlayStation 4 PSVR games and this is number one so I don't know how well you can see the spine but this is limited run zero one and this is pixel gear um, there's no numbers on here to say what number this was printed um, but this is the very first PSVR game that they did so this is in a hard shell protective case 
Uh, I don't know if there's any more VR games in here, but there's uh, more PS4 that I can see. So, we've got Mafia Definitive Edition Sleeve, but I don't believe the game is in here. Okay, so this one, this is a nice one. So, Shadow of the Colossus on the PS4. Pop that back. I think I just needed the sleeve, I was empty. I think what it is is I um, traded the game in back in the day and I kept the sleeve. I say back in the day, this only came out in 2020. Uh, so when this came out, I bought it, played it, sold it, kept the sleeve, and I've just put it on the sealed game just to protect it. Uh, up next, we've got Anthem. I've never played this game. Um, heard fairly good things about it. I know when it launched, it was a big flop, but I think it might have picked up. I'm not sure. I might be getting mixed up with Ark. But anyway, um, this one was only a couple of pounds. Now the next one is another limited run title. This is limited run three, sorry, PS3, and this is 01. So this is Oddworld Strangers Wrath HD. And then we've got Jack X Combat Racing on the PS4. And in the PS4 set of limited run games, this is number 179. Up next, Red Faction Guerrilla on the PlayStation 3. This was picked up in a bundle of PS3 games, and someone obviously just never got around to playing it, so that would have cost me like a pound. Uh, this is a cool one, so I bought this on purpose. I read somewhere online that Fast and Furious Crossroads was being delisted. Uh, it flopped hard, and they removed it from the store, so... The only way to play this is via physical copy, and I had um, a hunch that this would go up in price. Um, it hasn't, I don't think. I think you can still pick this up for 10, 12, 15 pounds on CEX. It's not a rare game, but I did hope that maybe it would be in the future. So I found one on eBay the second I saw the article, and the PS4 version was quite expensive, or they didn't have any on eBay. So I bought an Xbox version for around about 12 pounds. Um, so hopefully this one goes up in the future, but who knows? Next we've got Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, this is the bonus custom exoskeleton, uh, this is the Day Zero edition. So this one, I believe again, just picked up in a bundle, I didn't go out my way to buy this, so this would have only cost a couple of pounds as well. During lockdown, there were so many PS3 bundles, uh, some Xbox as well, but I was buying tons and tons of PS3 games, and that's kind of what inspired me to go for the full PS3 set, was because... I was just picking up so many PS3s, so many games at such a fast rate that I just thought, you know what, I'm going to keep one of every game. And when I get a duplicate, then I'll sell the duplicate. And obviously I kept condition upgrading and I got a really nice collection of really good condition games with the manuals. And I got to about 400 games and I thought, you know what, I've got so many games now, I might as well go for a full set. So during the times when I was picking up all these games, some of them did have some sealed games in there. So one of them was Red Faction and the other one was uh, Advanced Warfare. So I think they got one more PS3 game and that is also another one that was in the same bundle as that one and that is Call of Duty Ghosts on the PS3. Um, not the best conditions, a bit of sticky residue on it um, and the cover is a bit grubby but um, nothing that can't really be cleaned up. Um, but that is Call of Duty Ghosts. I don't think any of these PS3 games really hold any value whilst they are retro or vintage. They don't... Um, they are just cheap games so probably worth about four to five pounds each in this condition there's no super rare expensive ones sadly um so about six maybe six i want to say four to five years ago just before lockdown so maybe 2019 time i did go on ebay filtered ps4 games brand new and sealed filtered it to cheapest and i just added about £100 worth of games, so I picked up about 20 to 30 games on eBay, all PS4. So I believe we're starting to move on to those now. So we've got Memories Retold. So as I say, all of these next ones should all be £3 to £4 each, maximum £5 to £6 on eBay. So I don't think I've lost any money yet. I don't think many of them have gone up in price either. If you filter eBay, lowest, new, um, three, four, five years on, uh, as I bought these in 2019, it's now 2024, uh, you can still find the same games that I picked up then for £4, and they're still £4, so they're not really um, expensive, they've not gone up in price, I did hope they would, and maybe they still will, but at the moment they're still relatively attainable, so um, they haven't reached their potential yet, but the next one is Fade to Silence, and this is also on the PlayStation 4. 
we've got P Tunes Party. I've never heard of this one. Um, like I don't even remember this one. Uh, obviously these, as I'm going through it, it's jogging my memory where I got them from and whatever. But I have never heard of this game. The next game is This Is The Police. That game must have done well because they made a sequel, but I've never seen anyone play it or watch any gameplay. Uh, the Dwarfs. This looks like a Warhammer type game. Up next we have Space Hawk. Now I do own a PS Vita copy, but um, this is a great game if I remember rightly. It's kind of like a like a top down. It's like um, an awkward angle. It's like 2.5D maybe is the right term for that game. Um, but this is quite a cool game if I remember rightly. Has been a while since I played it though, so I can't really remember what happens. But um, good game nonetheless. The next one is Chaos on Deponia. Never heard of this one either. A lot of these are just indie games, and I think that's why I bought them, hoping that because they're indie games, they wouldn't have sold many copies, and then in the future they start to rise in price. But I don't think that's the case. I just think they've made low copies because no one wants them, and no one's bought them because no one wants them. So that's why you can still buy them relatively cheap on eBay. The next one is Mother Gunship. And another PS3 game. Ah, so it is in here, so um, I've already spoiled this one. But this one is Gran Turismo 5 Collector's Edition. Now, this is like a £60, £70 pound game now. Uh, this is still sealed. It doesn't have a Sony seal. It is um, plastic sealed, uh, just heat shrink wrapped. But this is a really nice Collector's Edition copy. Um, it comes with uh, an Apex exclusive... A magazine. I believe there's a key ring in there as well. Like in the magazine, you open it up, and if I remember rightly, there was a key ring, and then you've got the game with an exclusive collector's edition cover. Um, this is really nice. I might buy a box protector for this. Now, up next, let's start with the Vita again because I've now gone down to the next layer, so I can't access the next games until I've gone through some Vita games. So We've got Look Slinger, A Fistful of Fortune. This is another game which I believe was only brought out in this format. If I remember rightly, this was a pain in the ass to purchase because um, it sold out. Uh, and I think I managed to get one um, from PlayAsia. I don't think I went to eBay. But I remember a lot of people were complaining about that one when they couldn't buy it. The next one is Scrooge. Scourge Bringer, Scourge Bringer. I probably really butchered that title. It's in a really weird font, so it's hard to read. That one is number sixty-four. Then the next one is Patchy Patchy on a roll, and this is number fifty-four. So as you can see, the common theme with the PS Vita games, with the PlayAsia ones, is they're all thirty. 40, 50, 60 sort of numbers. I don't have any of the low ones, unfortunately. Uh, I have another copy of Bard's Gold. So this is number 71. So this is one of the later ones. So this is another duplicate. So I'm going to add that to the duplicate pile. Then we've got Just Ignore Them plus my Big Sister collection. So is this two games? I feel like this might be two games on one cartridge. That is number 70. So that's getting towards the latter end of the uh, Play Asia releases. This one is number 57, and this is Super Skull Smash Go 2 Turbo. It's a shame, really, because there's a lot of Vita games here um, that were never played by me, which is sad. But I think even if I did open them, I don't think I would have time to play them anyway. So for the time being, they're best just kept sealed. Uh, this one is Synergia. 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 Who knows? This one is number 56. We're having to dig deep now. We're getting, um, we're probably about two thirds of the way through the box. So I do apologize, it will be a long video. Uh, War Theatre Blood of Winter. This is another game that I know was hard to get, or a lot of people were complaining when they couldn't get it. Um, so this was a popular one. That's number 69. Nice. The next one is The Lost Cube, and that is number 55. Sixty-eight. This is Skull Pirates. I uh, remember this one as well. There's quite a few in here that are really popular, uh, which when they got released, a lot of people wanted them. Uh, towards the end of the Vita life cycle, there was a cartridge, cartridge print 
shortage. Sony stopped producing the cartridge, which ultimately was the decline of the Vita um, and what killed the console off. So all these manufacturers couldn't order games anymore. They only had a set number of cartridges. So let's say they plan to release 20 games. They obviously had in mind we were going to release, I don't know, 3,000 copies of each. Uh, and then suddenly they can only get access to, let's say, 3,000 cartridges. So they have to spread it out uh, in a smaller quantity. Um, so some of these games only got probably 1,000 or 900 print runs. Um, so some of them are really low. And that's why they are quite valuable. So I believe this is another duplicate. So this is Astro Aqua Kitty. Um, this is number 60. So that's another dupe so that can go in the dupe pile. And that's the last of it, by the looks of it, the last of the PS Vita games, you'll be pleased to know. So this is number 58, and this is 88 Heroes. Now, I do have more of these somewhere. Uh, I believe they're at my mum's house. I still have another box of um, Vita stuff. So I do have some of the lower numbers. But for now, those are all of these ones that are in this box specifically. So that's 88 Heroes. And now then, let's move back on to what looks like PS3 and PS4 games. Mostly PS4. I can see a couple of PS3 in here, um, but yeah, there's a good, I don't know, 30, there's probably another 60 to 70 games left, so stay tuned for more. Let's grab a stack. Oh, what a game. So, Little Big Planet 3, this is probably the worst in the series, but still a great game. I love the Little Big Planet series. Uh, other than Uncharted and Zelda and the big sort of blockbuster games, Little Big Planet has a big place in my heart it was the first game that I had on the PlayStation 3 uh, when I first had the console and I fell in love with it and it was just a perfect perfect game um, Little Big Planet 2 was even better and number three they tried to introduce new characters and it just didn't really go down well with the community or the fan base and it just flopped a bit uh, and at the moment it's going through a lot of trouble because the online servers have been taken down and at the moment that's the only way to enjoy like 2 million levels that people have well, nearly dropped the games in. There's like 2 million levels that people have created and um, because the servers are offline no one can play them. So they're in like a fight to get them back online but they've claimed they've been hacked. But the last time that happened they removed all the servers on Little Big Planet 1 and 2 and I just don't see them bringing Little Big Planet 3 back online unfortunately. Um, and it's a series that Sony just doesn't want to support anymore, which is a shame. Um, but yeah, I love the Little Big Planet series. Up next, we've got Farpoint. This is another VR game, uh, not to be sold separately. So this would have come with the gun attachment. Up next, we've got Fallout 4. We've got Pool Nation. Like a snooker slash pool game. Then we've got Mutant Football League Dynasty Edition. So this looks like American football with like, well, mutants, but yeah, they're essentially just monsters in uh, NFL um, costumes. Oh, this is a nice one. So this is Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Um, so I'm a big Uncharted fan. So some of the Uncharted games I tried to get sealed. I don't think I got any of the PS3 games sealed, but I tried to get all the PS4 ones sealed. Next, we are back to PlayStation 3 games. So, we've got New and Tasty Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. This is the limited edition, and this is number two in the limited run PS3 set. Then we've got, I bought two copies, I think I bought three copies actually. So, one's in my collection, and two are in this box. So, we've got Grand Theft Auto San Andreas sealed. And that's a duplicate, and we've also got a second copy of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas sealed. So somebody had 10 sealed copies in a Facebook group and he wanted £25 each. I offered him £70 for three. And at the time they were going for about £30 each on eBay. And I was gonna sell some of them, but I didn't. And then the price has dropped since, but it's definitely a game that will go up in price, especially when GT6 drops, this should go up in price. Um, so we've got two sealed copies of that. And as I've just spoke about Little Big Planet, I have an original Little Big Planet sealed copy, which I will not be opening, um, and this is staying sealed. Such a lovely game, um, and it's a shame that the condition is not great. There's a little tear there, but um, but yeah, this is for my collection, so that's not being sold. Um, and we've still got loads of games left. They're all PS4 now, but it looks fit. They're all blue cases. So we've got Wargroove. 
We've got DCL game, which is a drone like racing game, I believe. We've got World of Warriors. And we've got Titan Quest. Now this one, the disc is loose, which is a shame. And the last one is Valtherian Arc Hero School Story. So I've just had a food break. I've just come back to do the rest of the video. As I said, there's about a third of the box left. And uh, I've put them into little piles here. So I've taken them all out now, just so I don't have to keep reaching down. So let's get into the last of it. There's probably about 40 to 50 games left. So up next, we've got Grand Theft Auto San Andreas again. I didn't realize it was in the box. I thought it was on my shelf, but I do have three copies of that. Then we've got all PS4 games now. There's some VR in there, but they are all for PS4. So we've got This Is The Police 2. Dreams, a fantastic game, another media molecule game, similar to Little Big Planet. Very, very difficult to create levels, but I really enjoyed the game nonetheless. I bought this pre-owned for 3 dollars from Game, and when I bought it, they gave me a sealed copy. So obviously I kept it sealed. Then we've got Monkey King Hero is Back. I think this was like £2 or something online. This is another eBay purchase, Scribblenauts Showdown. Then this was in a game Black Friday sale for like six ninety nine. but this is PlayStation hit version of Horizon Zero Dawn. This is the complete edition with all the DLC and it's got that ugly red spine. Now we've also got a copy of Black Mirror. We've got Industry Giant 2. This is a limited run game and this is a Reverend Saga. So this is like a $25, $30 game. Um, some of them are limited run. When I started collecting the Vita, I also bought the PS4 games as well, and it just got way too expensive, so I st stopped collecting for the PS4. So some of them are limited run VR games, but um, some of them are also just, I don't know, you can see that, just the standard PS4 version. Uh, this is number 68, and I believe they're at like 200 and something. Maybe higher, I don't know, but they're constantly just milking the PS4 games, so I just, I'm glad I stopped collecting them. This next one is also a limited run game. This is 136, and this one is Fern's Gate. Another one I've not heard of. Another limited run game, 155, 135, and this is Dragon Fantasy. Another limited run, 125, and this is Spelunky. This is a great game. I remember playing this on the Vita. Quite difficult, though. Uh, Dead Alliance. This looks like a zombie shooter. Um, not too sure what to make of that one. It looks pretty cool, though. That one is just a standard game. I believe this is a German copy. If you look at the back, it's got some German writing on there, and it's got this big USK sticker. Next, we have a sealed copy of Uncharted 4, which includes bonus multiplayer DLC as well as reversible cover art. So this is not the best condition. There's a little um, rip there, but I love the Uncharted games nonetheless. So I have this and Lost Legacy, and I have also seen in here some others, so I'll show you those when I get to them. So the next one is Qua Infernal Machines. This is another VR game. This isn't a limited run game, but it is a VR game, so I'll keep that sealed. Another VR game is Space Junkies. I didn't realise I had this one. I do plan on buying quite a lot of VR games from CEX because they're all like quite cheap at the moment. Um, but the limited run games for the VR are very expensive. So one of these expensive ones is Accounting Plus. This was a fantastic game. I really enjoyed this one. And I like the cover art on that one. It's a bit dirty. And this one, they re so these retail at like $39.99 or less, so sometimes $29.99, sometimes $34.99. Um, but this A-Train Express, I remember it being something like $59.99 or $49.99. And with shipping, this was like a £50, £60 game. The rest were all like 35 quid, but this was like 50 55 So this was an expensive one. 
I'm not too sure what it is. I think it's a train simulator. So it looks like City Skyline, but like a train version. So yeah, um, it's a shame it never got played, but very expensive. This one is Prison Boss VR. This is another limited run. So this is limited run 07. We've got a limited run 08 on A train. And this one is limited run 09. Unfortunately, not that one, but this one, the disc has come out, which is a shame. Uh, which of course will inevitably lose value. Uh, we've got a limited run 06, which is Project Lux. So that is limited run VR 06. So I believe I collected the first 9 or 10 on VR and then I stopped. Ah, here we go. So my favourite game of all time is Uncharted 2. And this is the HD remaster on the PS4. Of course sealed. Now, they did do a collection of three games. But uh, they also released each individual game on disc. So these were quite collectible. Um, or at least they will be. When I bought them they were on sale for like 6 99 for Margos or 7 99 um, but I'm really happy to have this one sealed. Great game. And then we've also got Uncharted Drake's Fortune Remastered. Now, this one does have a little bit of damage on the back because the disc was loose. And my girlfriend uh, looked how to put the disc back in, or I told her about it. And she looked it up and she tried to do it for me. So she did manage to get the disc back in, which is great. Um, but unfortunately it has left a few little dots on the back of the cover. Um, but either way, I'm very happy that that's back in its place. Uh, this was a Facebook Marketplace pickup or a car boot pickup, I can't remember which one, but I bought two of these for something like £8 each, and I was going to sell one and keep one, and I listed one on eBay for like 15 and it never sold, so I just thought I'm going to um, take it off and just keep it, so I do have a second copy of this somewhere, I don't think it's in here, but I do have another copy, I think it might be on the shelf, um, but that's Scully. We've got Rayman Legends. Another great game, another great platformer. I really enjoyed the Vita version. So if you see there, it's got the Vita on the back. This was cross-play with the Vita, I think. Um, this was a fantastic game. To the top. So this is Limited Run VR02. And following on with the Limited Run theme, we've got Jack 3. This is 149. And of course... We've got two more Uncharted games, so we've got Drake's Deception, we also had Drake's Fortune and um, Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, so we have the set of three, we also have um, Uncharted 4, and this one is Uncharted the Nathan Drake Collection, and as I mentioned earlier, we all, I haven't got it on hand, but we've also got the one with Chloe and Nadine as the protagonists, uh, Lost Legacy. So that's six Uncharted games I've got sealed, which I'm very happy with because I do love the Uncharted games. And then we've got Former 8, which is another limited run game. This is number 141. Alone With You, I believe the rest, most of them will be limited run now. So we've got 138 and this is Alone With You Plus, I think. This one is Tacoma. And this is 134. We've got Red Matter. Now this got an upgrade on PSVR. And I haven't played it yet, but I've heard it's fantastic. So I will be downloading it. My gripe with the PSVR 2 is I'm a physical game collector. And they are literally all download codes. So I'm waiting for physical copies of those to start being released before I pull the trigger on them. Um, but this is meant to be a great game. And the... Um, Remastered version on the PSVR 2 is meant to be fantastic, so I do plan on picking up Red Matter 1 and Red Matter 2. Um, but I'm glad I've got that one, that's another VR title. And that is actually Limited Run VR 10, I didn't realise that was a Limited Run game, so that's number 10. All of these, man, are all loose, like, the PS4 is the worst console for loose discs. Like, I don't know what it is about them, but the PS3 rarely has a loose disc, but the PS4... Like half of these games have loose discs in them, which is really frustrating, obviously, from a collecting standpoint. Um, so we've got VR10987625. I've seen number one somewhere. Um, so I did get most of the limited run VR ones. I'm not sure how many they went up to. I stopped collecting after 10 just because it was so expensive. And I, um, at the time, I think I was saving to move out of my home's house. So up next, we've got MotoGP17. I think this is quite a valuable one. These MotoGP games tend to keep their value. Uh, we've got Black Guards 2. 
limited day one edition includes digital art book and soundtrack so it's a limited edition that includes virtual stuff um which is fine but who wants a virtual art book as a as like a limited edition that's that's naff um the next one is also a limited one title this is 108 and this is gunhouse Another limited run, which is number 75, this is Metochromicon. So the reason I've got quite a lot of these PS4 games as well is I also, limited run used to do bundles like February bundle and you could buy all of the February games in one bundle and sometimes the Vita games would sell out so I would buy the entire bundle and it came with all the Vita games but it also came with the PS4 games. <coughs> Excuse me. So a lot of them I will have some random games in here and random titles, so this one is number 75. So a lot of the Vita um, limited run games that I've been reading out for PS4 have been like 120, 130. These is 75, so it's quite low. So this would have been I bought it just because of the Vita uh, and I needed that extra game. Um, so this one is number 69 and this is the BitTrip Special Limited Edition. Then we've got... Jagged Allegiance Rage on the PS4. This one's not a limited run game. I don't think the rest... Oh, there's a couple of... of Mitch. Um, so we've got four left. So two are limited run and two are not. And they're both the same series. So the first series we go with is Diblob. So we have Diblob and Diblob 2. Another series that I do want to play. I played it a bit on the PS3 and enjoyed it. So I might play the ps4 versions that's why i picked these up so i went out my way to actually buy these the other ones most of them were just in the sale and i picked them up but this is a series that i picked up with the intention to play so one day i might crack the seal on these or i'll just download them on the ps store and the good thing is with the ps plus is you get so many free games that if they're not on there already they probably will be at some point and then the final games from this big box are jack and in fact they're both jack too so we have two uh, variant covers of Jack 2 on the PS4. Now I believe I missed out on Jack 1 which is a shame but I picked up the collector's editions with these so I have the collector's edition of Jack 2, 3 and Jack X but not the first one which is the Precursor's Legacy I believe it is which is a shame because that is one of the um, more expensive games and probably the best game in the series. Um, so we got Jack 3 here and we did have Jack X lying around somewhere. So that then guys is the end of the video that is the box empty thank you so much for watching i know it's been a long video if you got this far i really do appreciate it thanks for sticking around to the end if you are not subscribed please consider subscribing please like the video please comment below uh, if you've seen any games in here that you think i should play or pick up um sorry open and play then please leave a comment down below um, hopefully there's some games in here that's inspired you to go and pick them up or go and collect them or there's some games that you have not heard of that look interesting to you um, then that, that's really cool too so yeah leave in the comments below um, your favorite games from the bundle uh, whether you're gonna buy them or whether you've got them already and you think I should play them um, otherwise that's everything thank you very much for sticking around and I'll see you on the next video